would like to call the meeting to order. This is Rules and Open Government Committee meeting February 12, 2014. Unless we have changes to the order, we'll just start at the beginning, which would be uh, the February 28th Council meeting agenda. I'm sorry, 25th. Anything on page one? I, I think that's the last 9 o'clock closed session in, until, or at least for a while. For a while, okay, but 9 o'clock is still appropriate. Yes. Right. Being on page two or three. Page four or five. Item 3.4 are the terms of the agreement with uh, Firefighters Local 230. Uh, the question I have for that is whether or not that's ready to go to the council in light of the questions that have been raised about the fire department's response times and whether or not we need to do some organizational changes internal uh, to the department that might be not possible with this contract in place. And should we defer this for a week or two to figure that out? I know the chief has gotten quite a bit uh, of work to try to figure out what the cause is for the delays, but I don't want to tie his hands about solving it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if the, it's, it, it couldn't be put off for another week. Uh, both Alex and Jennifer are in Oakland today at a per hearing, so they're not available. So, but I don't know the harm in delaying it one week. Uh, we do meet again, Rules Committee, next week. And uh, so that would be, I think, something to for the staff to think about. And in part depends on what the chief thinks he might need to be able to do and whether or not this contract might have to be delayed for a while. So let's uh, put that on the referral to staff to be able to answer that question and make a recommendation on whether we should proceed on this date or, or some later date. Because the contract's already expired, the contract expired June 30th. Mm -hmm. So whether we wait another uh, week or two or, or so it doesn't matter. And this is a rollover contract anyway. There's no raises in this. Uh, anything else on page four or five? Uh, item 4.3, biennial economic strategy work plan review. I'd like to have that uh, deferred a week uh, to the whatever that first meeting in March is. March 4th. March 4th. Anything else on four or five, page six or seven? Page eight, we do have some uh, public hearings scheduled for the evening. That's the items, one, two items on page eight. May I, I have no, yes. I sure. have a note on here on that uh, we deferred the long range development plan from yesterday. Oh, Is yeah. that going to be heard um, on the 25th? We would need to put that on the 25th and it's the long range property right. plan from the it's redevelopment. 9 .1. It's 9.1. It's 9.1. Page seven. You may have an older version. Okay. It's just, oh. yeah, it's not shown on the drafts that we have in front of us. So it is, it will be on as 9.1. Mayor, you may want to note that 11.2 and 11.3, one's a conforming rezoning and one's a uh, pre-zoning. They, they should take, uh, I don't think they're controversial and they may be very quick, so it, it could be a very short evening meeting if, if. There is no option to bring it to the day? I think you could defer it till the following week during the day because um, it's notice for this, this hearing. And so I instead of hearing it on the, the evening of the 25th, it could be continued to the day of the of March 4th. I don't think there's going to be any opposition. That's fine. Okay. That would be 11.2 and 11.3 to... And, and I'm not aware of any ceremonials. For the evening. Oh, well. There might be one for the evening. There might be one for the evening. We have to talk to the author's office to see if um, they'd be willing to do it at another time. And as to both the other items, um, staff has reached out to uh, the districts and the applicants on both of those with the proposed move to the afternoon, and it appears to be okay. Right. So then that ceremonial can the be afternoon the, tw the 25th? Yeah. Um, oh. uh, no, the oh. afternoon of the 4th. The 4th, okay. 
Yeah. So, so we, we can ask to see if that uh, ceremony could be pushed back. Yeah, I think it should, since it might be the only thing on the evening agenda. I have no written requests for additions. Any other additions? I have one request to speak. David Wall. Sir, with reference to 3.4, the uh, terms of agreement with the San Jose Firefighters, International Association of Firefighters, Local 230, I would support immediate ratification of this uh, and acceptance of this contract. Uh, I'm very much aware as to the political pandering of the swine that are the elected officials of the County Board of Supervisors serving their own interests with reference to response times. Everybody uh, that's associated with San Jose knows exactly why response times are down as a reference of Measure B and other assorted uh, administrative acts against the firefighters. We should support our firefighters and uh, tell the County Board of Supervisors to go pound salt. With reference to 7.1, the master agreement with Hydroscience Engineers, sir, look at the number of engineers we have already from Public Works and the, and the uh, Water Pollution Control Plant engineers. Why do we keep having to hire outside contracted engineers for services? Obviously, sir, there's an issue that many of the engineers are unlicensed by the State of California Consumer Affairs Board, and this raises serious questions as to the administration's lack of fiduciary responsibility in ensuring that we have high quality and licensed employees. Item 9.1, the review and discussion of long range property management plan. Um, you should keep deferring this to, to protect the council candidates that are running for mayor with the exception of uh, council member Oliverio who I, I probably didn't vote for any of these properties because he doesn't like wasting taxpayers money. However, some of the other candidates, uh, including yourself, sir, voted for these properties that you're getting ready to give away for pennies on the dollar uh, with reference to the highest bid tendered for these properties. I would suggest once again that you petition the governor of the state of California to give you leeway in the disposition of these properties to where you can just, you know, minimum get the amount of money you paid for. Thank you. Martha O'Connell. I think you're the first to use it, so you might have to <coughs> switch it on. Okay. We'll bring in an expert here. All right, thank, thank you. you. I'd like to thank all of you for your unanimous vote yesterday to modify the appointment procedure for the HCDC. I'm sorry Councilperson Constant isn't here because I was hoping to be able to alert him to the fact that unlike most commissions, this commission meets monthly. And that is why I concur with him that these appointments need to be made sooner rather than later. For the next three months, on the agenda for the HCDC is the housing element. Each one of these months, there's going to be a hearing and possible action. Right now, there's only three people on that commission. Furthermore, it would not surprise me if the idea of the nexus fee came back for review by, by the HCDC which uh, you may recall passed out of that commission on a five to three vote to have the highest nexus fee imposed on the developers. So hopefully we can move this along so that when these important issues come up, there are more than three people and we have a diverse uh, representation of the folks in San Jose. Thank you. That concludes the public testimony. We have some requested changes, et cetera. Anything else from the committee? Motion to approve. Second. Motion is to approve with the, the changes as discussed. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed, none opposed. That's approved. <coughs> Nothing on study session agendas or legislative update. Meeting schedules we have uh, change in the meeting schedule in June to consider, June 17th and June 10th. So moved. Second. Motion is to uh, schedule the evening council session on June 10th. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed, none opposed. That's done. Public record, anything the committee would like to pull for discussion? I have a request to speak, Mr. Wall. Uh, with reference to Items A through F, they should all be required reading by council. Uh, specifically, sir, I'm very concerned 
about the impetus towards the mechanical dewatering of sludge, uh, digested sewage sludge, except, uh, sorry. Sir, you as uh, the chairman of the Treatment Plant Advisory Committee and member, um, Vice Mayor Nguyen is also a member of that uh, very illustrious and secretive committee. Uh, this is going to cost the taxpayers hundreds of millions of dollars that is not needed. Unless, of course, and, I, and I'm going to be raising this issue because I, I can't figure out any other reason why there would be a move towards this except for possible city officials uh, receiving payola to, to go down this path. Uh, sir, unwinding a contract with the McCarthy Ranch Corporation is not needed. I mean, they signed a contract. They were happy to get the millions of dollars in consideration uh, for allowing this property to remain fallow. The atrocity associated with public monies expended, uh, expended uh, for the water pollution control plant master plan is, is a gross embarrassment that occurred under your administration, sir. Uh, trying to develop those sludge lagoons into anything but what they're the design to do and what they've done for years, decades, is just, I can't even imagine it. Especially when you purchased, not you, sir, but the city purchased pond uh, A18 for sludge uh, processing years ago. Now this development, sir, will cost the taxpayers close to $500 million or more. This was a, a, a rate put forth by a former manager of the water pollution control plant who's now in retirement. Now, any other type of funding that you come up with for this is illusory, sir, because mechanical dewatering. That concludes public testimony on the public record. Anything the committee wants to talk about? Motion to note file. Second. Motion is to note and file the public record on the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unopposed? I believe that we have nothing on our boards, commissions, and committees. Item G. Category G, we have two special event requests, the Greek flag raising and the District 5 neighborhood appreciation both. event. Second. The motion to approve both G2 and G5. David Wall. Sir, with uh, reference to G5, uh, this is not picking on Council Member Campos or any other Council Member that, that uses this boilerplate uh, language for these uh, city-sponsored events. This needs to be tightened up because the argument, a compelling argument could be made that these are actually fundraising uh, uh, events for the campaign of the incumbent. Now, it, it lists in here expenditure funds and, quote, accepting donations from various individuals, businesses, or community groups to support the event held on February 7, 2014, uh, close quote. Uh, sir, this is very nebulous. If it's directly to the cost of this and not going into campaign funds, I can accept that. However, the way it's worded, it could easily be for campaign donations to the detriment of other candidates running for office because it's a city-sponsored event excluding intentionally excluding all others from participating and receiving a ton of cash. Thank you. We have a motion to approve both and put them on the uh, March 4th council agenda for council approval. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unopposed. That's approved. G3 is the next item. We request the Support Postal Service Protection Act of 2013. Originally, uh, Memorandum from Councilmember Chu. We talked about this last week or the week before. Councilmember Chu, do you want to speak to your memo? Thank you, uh, Mayor and my colleague on the Rules Committee. I, I'm here to ask the Rules Committee to place the item on the next City Council's agenda to adopt a resolution to support the Postal Services Act of uh, 2013. I want to thank the, uh, Bessie for your analysis and the memo, and, and also the members of the National Association of Letter Carriers uh, for coming out and to uh, speak this afternoon. And I know that a couple weeks ago they were also here uh, to, to, to speak to the Rules Committee. Senate Bill 316 and House Bill 630 
otherwise known as the Postal Services Act of 2013, address the U.S. Postal Service's current financial situation. In addition, it will allow the Postal Services to manage its budget more effectively, be more competitive with other delivery systems providers, and protect many of the jobs that are being threatened by the Senate Bill 1486, which will cut Saturday hours, which is a very important issue there. It is important that we support the Post, uh, the, uh, uh, post, post Services Act of 2013 because a third of all mailers and, and small businesses say that they need Saturday services. Uh, this would also prohibit cut to s Saturday mail de services, reinstate overnight delivery standards, and also prevent shutdown of uh, many sorting facilities. In, in addition, post, uh, Postal Services is the second largest civilian employer in the country, with 25% of their employees being the United States veterans. So there, therefore, I recommend that the City Council um, and, and uh, the uh, Rules Committee to forward that to the, uh, the Food Council for, uh, for a discussion and definitely will uh, hope for, uh, hopefully that our, we will accept a resolution to support this Postal Services Protection Act of 2013. And, and if there's any wording um, change and changes that, that necessary, I will also ask the city attorney to uh, uh, offer any necessary uh, suggestions to prepare for the resolution in the most efficient way. Thank you very much. We have some requests from the public to speak. We'll take that. Guillermo Martinez, please come on down. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Rules Committee. Uh, as we uh, discussed last month, uh, I'd like to continue to uh, try to um, convince the committee that the Postal Service, the Postal Service operations are profitable. And because of the economy, package delivery and service mail, service mail, which is uh, certified mail, registered mail, uh, express <laughs> mail, any uh, um, signature uh, uh, capture mail is on the rise. Small businesses and businesses out of homes are sending out a record amount of packages. And it is not uncommon for a carrier to pick up up to 20 to 40 packages on a daily basis. This is, a, this is a result of a program that was implemented by management and craft and is called Customer Connect. Customer Connect is where carriers identify potential mailers and refer them to marketing. Companies like FedEx, UPS, DHL, and OnTrack deliver packages to our back dock in post offices, and we deliver those to the, on the last to the last mile, to the addresses that they uh, are, are uh, intended to. Large companies like Macy's, Nordstrom's, Target, Hollister, and Victoria's Secret, Amazon, et cetera, are, are sending merchandise through the Postal Service. We have the infrastructure and the largest fleet of vehicles in the country, and we are on the way to success, but we but we just need good, sound legislation. Uh, in 2013, we recorded $623 million profit. This year, we are uh, earmarked to project, we are projected uh, one, 1 $1.1 billion operating profit. Sorry, your time is up. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor. Ernie Aranyaga. Uh, yes, I just want to also add something. Uh, Mayor, you uh, pr asked a question on how much the Postal Service has already pre-funded future retirees. And there's already studies that show that the Postal Service has pre-funded the civil service retirement system in the amount of 50 to $55 billion, and that money is already there in the fund. And it's only due to those 5.5, 5.8 billion annual dollar payments that the Postal Service is having to make is the reason why they're losing all that money. During the big time of the recession, 
If it wasn't for that pre-funding, they would have profited three out of those four years. And then now, as Guillermo just mentioned, they're projecting a, a profit of $1.1 billion this year. And another thing, uh, Vice Mayor, you were concerned about how many employees would be, our uh, jobs would be lost. Well, it's estimated that if they eliminate the day of service or Saturday to service, it'll affect 18 to 20 percent of the letter carriers that are working here in San Jose. And we have approximately 650 to 700 letter carriers that are working delivering mail here in San Jose, and of which 20 to 25 percent of them would be veterans losing their jobs. So that's why we're hoping that we can count on your support to pass this resolution and pass council members who's a resolution to adopt uh, this, this measure here. Thank you. David Wall. I was unable to thank council member Chu personally last week for your efforts in this regard. You, sir, have always brought up uh, issues to support that does not benefit directly to your position uh, with reference to your Council of Contemporaries. And so I applaud you, sir, for this. Uh, with reference to the last speaker, sir, we as citizens should be very proud and honored for our post office that has addressed the issue of paying pension responsibilities in comparison to you, sir, and the councils, uh, sidestepping the issue and basically trying to make city employees a member of the slave class. Uh, sir, you should have been taking this type of leadership and paying down uh, your, your, your liabilities for your pension uh, payments. Now, for disclosure purposes, I'm a city of San Jose retiree, and I certainly do not appreciate uh, the actions of council picking on retirees, especially the older folks, although when I got up this morning, I felt like I'm part of that group to begin with. And so support of this measure not only starts to show that uh, public agencies need to pony up their responsibilities to pensions, but also the post office, as I discussed last week, is an instrument to, ins uh, to ensure free speech because the post office delivers communication. That's, that's their job. And that communication is the foundation of free speech, in my opinion. But sir, walk away from this today learning that you should pay down your pension liabilities and not try to make dutiful city employees economic slaves. Thank you. And thank you, Councilmember Chu. That concludes public testimony. So what the committee wants to do. Uh, I have a lot of concerns about these bills over the uh, pre-funding of retiree health care issue. I, I don't think anybody should avoid pre-funding their retirement obligations. Uh, we're struggling to pre-fund ours in San Jose. It is a, a difficult and expensive proposition, but uh, if you're going to provide benefits to people, they have to be paid for. You can only do it with money. And I, I there's other ways to do it besides just skipping your debts. Uh, and I think that that's what, you know, the federal government ought to do. If that means raising the rates, well, it means raising the rates. But you got to pay your obligations. You have to pay for this retiree health care. You need to pay for the re pension benefits. Uh, life would be a lot easier in San Jose if we didn't have to pay for those. And to say that uh, we should let the Postal Service not pay their retiree uh, benefits just because the rest of the federal government doesn't pay their retiree benefits is not a very high standard. So I'm, I'm troubled by the idea that somehow not paying for retirement benefits is the secret uh, to this. And I've read through the uh, staff uh, summary of the other bills. It's way complicated, shall we say, uh, at least in, in my ability to understand what it is uh, they're all proposing and the differences. But, uh, you know, I couldn't support a recommendation not to pay the retiree uh, benefits or pre-fund them. They should be paid. They should be pre-funded. Uh, we're trying to do that in San Jose. Uh, I think if we had a recommendation to, to say that we want to keep our post offices open six days a week and we're willing to pay for uh, uh, pay rate increases to do that, uh, I could certainly support that. I like having six days a week. It's important to small businesses. It's all good for the, the community, but I don't want to take advantage of not paying uh, those retirement benefits. But it would be up to the council. If the council wants to uh, do it one way or the other. Anything else, committee? So 
what we should do. I suggest we just put it on the council agenda yeah. with uh, no recommendations from this committee and the council can take whatever action the council wants to take, but I, I don't support not paying your obligations. Can, can I uh, ask uh, Bassey to clarify that this bill not really um, stopping the, the, the USPS for, for putting money into the retirement benefit. You just tr pretty much uh, um, find a different revenue source. I hesitate to answer the, uh, to the specific specificity of your question, council member. I mean, I know it's the language here, what we pulled from the legislation, how they are going to continue to fund the pension. I, I, it, is, it is not something I can uh, be specific about as far as what alternative ways they're going to be funding their uh, retirement. But I don't this know if bill does not really say that we will quit, stop paying the retirement benefit. Well, I, again, you know, I, there is the issue of the 75 year in advance pre-funding, which is these are addressing as far as how they're, they're alternatively addressing funding pensions. I don't have that, that specificity. And I don't know if the committee would care to call the gentleman who spoke earlier who has a better uh, knowledge of the financial. I'd rather call Sal Lofgren or mm -hmm. our local delegation. And speaking of that, they all are in support, uh, have signed on to co-sponsor the, uh, the House Measure uh, 630, the entire Bay Area delegation is co-sponsoring 630. Mayor, is it possible to ask Ernie to address that question? Sure, if Ernie could come back up here and talk about why it's a good idea not to pre-fund uh, oh, retirement pre obligations. It's, it's okay, right, the Postal Service has already been paying into into the account to pre-fund. And as I mentioned earlier, the civil service retirement s uh, system, there's been already studied as to how much money the Postal Service has paid into it. And the study shows, and there's three studies that were done for the Office of Personal Ma Management and the Postal Regulatory Commission. And those studies were anywhere from 50 to $75 billion of money that's already been put into the account. And then the, uh, there's another study that was done, I believe, by the Hague Group for the Office of Personal Management, which is more, did more conservative um, uh, rulings or uh, findings on it, where it said there was 50 to $55 million already in there right now. But right now, we know that back in 2010, there was $42 billion already in the fund and the Civil Service Retirement Fund that, con that could um, last for the next 20 years for all uh, postal employees. And now as of July of 1984, we had another tier of a retirement fund, which is a federal employee's retirement system. There's already, they've already paid into that, and there's already anywhere from nine to $12 billion is what the studies are showing in, those, in that fund. So there's two different uh, funds, CSRS, 50 to $55 billion in it, and in the FERS, there's nine to $12 billion in there. So the money is there already to pay down the road, but it's just making it mandatory for the Postal Service to keep them on putting that money when we went through one of the worst recessions in what, over almost nearly 80 years and kind of seems unfair for the Postal Service to have to keep on doing that when we already have money already pre-funded for those uh, accounts for, for uh, down the road. Well, it's not how much money you have in the account, it's how much money should you have in the account, what's the unfunded liabilities and how much do you need to put in to make sure people get paid what they've earned. And just because it's difficult to make contributions doesn't change the unfunded liabilities. You still owe the money for the benefits. And if you have a good year and don't make the payments, then I don't know if it's 20 years out or 30 years out, you run out of money. Yeah. But like I said- How is that good? Yeah, well, those two funds already have money in there and they're talking about with the interest that it, this should be enough to sustain years down the road. Now, they're asking us to do it 75 years down the road, and those are for people that aren't even working for the Postal Service yet. So it just seems a little, you know, we just want the support to let them know that there are other bills out there that might be able to preserve the Postal Service, and when the time gets better, when we are doing better, we will be able to make that, those obligations. But like I said, it's not like there's no money in those accounts, it's there. Well, California Teachers Retirement System has billions of dollars in the account, but they, they're gonna run out of money by their 
terms in about 30 years. That means that the teachers who are working today aren't going to get a retirement payment. Well, that's not right. You have to keep putting money in it, even if you have money in it. And if they're going to stop putting money in there, that's going to be bad for somebody. It won't be me. I'll be gone. But you know, my, my kids and my grandkids are, are going to have to do something because of that liability that they're creating by not funding it. So. Anyway, I'm, I'm just opposed to not paying your, your obligations. Okay. Well, uh, another concern about it is there was a study by the Government Accountability Office saying that the savings the Postal Service would make by eliminating the day of service or Saturday delivery, they didn't agree with that. But there was another conclusion that they came with. If this is to happen, it's only going to accelerate the decline in mail volume, and it'll accelerate the decline of the Postal Service as we know it today. But, but, uh, yeah. I, I think six-day service is a good thing. Yeah. Mayor, can I ask, Ernie, what, what's your uh, funding level uh, after your retirement system? You've got 80 percent, 70 percent? No, on the civil service retirement s um, system, I believe it's already funded like 98 percent. And on the FERS, I'm not sure exactly to how much on that. That's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. But if you stop making the payments, the funding level goes down. That's just the way it works. Yes, uh, Councilor Oliveria. Yeah, no, obviously this is a uh, topic that has much interest. It obviously has a high level of complexity as, as titled through the multi-page memo that lists out all the different options in titled ones through seven on each different bill. And, uh, you know, it's pretty clear and simple that this is an issue of the federal government. And it's for Congress to decide how to manage the organizations they manage. I wouldn't expect them to tell us to manage land use or other things of the city. And so I'm inclined to, uh, you know, I, I just, I think it's out of the realm scope of the city of San Jose. It's really for our members of Congress and if they've taken a position, then, then let them vote accordingly. We, we could certainly say that we'd like to maintain our six day uh, service. You know, it's a service to our community. Exactly how that gets done is kind of over our heads Raising rates is obviously one of those things that has been done in the past. But beyond that, it's way beyond our expertise to try to sort out the, that at this, at this point. We could. Vice Mayor? Yeah, um, and I, I absolutely agree. I think that this is just so complicated, um, and I don't think that just you know passing a, a resolution is going to help in any way trying to solve these complicated issues. There's just so many complexities in just reading through the memo. and. Just based on what the mayor said in regards to the city of San Jose making a statement saying that, yeah, we do appreciate the six-day mail delivery and we wanted to maintain that, is there any way that we can do that without um, sending these resolutions <coughs> to, uh, to our representative? Yeah, I, I think, you know, I, I think the, the resolution contemplates specific bills. Uh, there's nothing that would limit the, ca the council's ability to pass a resolution urging Congress to maintain six-day service. Uh, without getting into the specifics of a mandate on retiree health care and, and, and other aspects of the bill or any specific bill, just for if the council wanted to say we want to continue six-day service, that's what the resolution would say. Okay, we could do that. I mean, I think it's certainly something that we support, and it's not really that complicated in terms of understanding, you either have six-day service or you don't. And, and we, so can, we can play with the resolution draft here to, to at least give you a form if, that, if you wanted to refer to this council for consideration. Just bring it back yeah. to the rules or yeah. something? It's, I, up I to the, it's up to the committee. Yeah, I would prefer that um, allow the city attorney's office to actually draft that statement and then bring back to the rules committee for consideration. Second. Okay, we'll direct, defer to staff, refer to staff and, and bring it back. Uh, Betsy, what's the status of these bills in uh, terms of moving through Congress? Well, the, 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 in the councilman's memo, the second paragraph, Senate Bill uh, 1486, that did get out of committee and we're going, we'll be going to the floor, but we don't know really when the uh, uh, Senator Reid will be scheduling such a bill. And, and to the council members' points, these, there are bills out there that do encourage the five-day the service versus the six. So to, to the uh, city attorney's point, by not labeling the bill, you might have this issue of the service and then you'd be covering all of this, this discussion and these issues in this legislation, which we would share with our delegation, uh, both in the House and in the Senate. So, uh, and then the other ones are, are there um, in, in committee 
as, as the status of each one is, is noted. So that's, that's where things are. It's, it's so different than Sacramento. So I mean, a couple of weeks, yeah. it's not going to make much difference in the life of these bills. There's I would think we'd be okay. It's not going to a vote on the floor next week or anything. Uh, yeah. So we've got some time to try to figure out what the right thing is. Right. Well, following the debt limit vote uh, yesterday, last night and today, they said that the Congress is going to be in adjournment now uh, through next week, through the President's weekend holiday. So okay. I don't think they're going to be back for a week and a half myself. So as far as any action. Okay. So we have some time to let the staff uh, do some uh, work on it. We'll refer it to staff and bring it back to the Rules Committee with a... Uh, a modified resolution? Okay. Okay, that's the motion on the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None opposed. That's what we'll do. So we'll give the staff some time to work on it. Thank you. Next item is uh, item G4. That's uh, Councilmember Campos's uh, request to agendize a council vote on a, a general sales tax increase. Uh, I think in light of Monday's discussion about which tax measures to move, that this one is probably moot at this point in terms of putting it on the June primary ballot. But uh, Councilor Campos, the staff is here so they can tell us what his current thinking is. Uh, unfortunately, Councilmember Campos can't be here today. My name is Nicole Willett, and this is Garrett Radcliffe, and we're from the office of Councilmember Campos. Uh, whether the issue comes on the June or November ballot is not important. Um, we're fine if it moves to November. The most important thing for Councilmember Campos is that the City Council starts to, starts to take steps in order to restore services to the people of San Jose, including having the ability to fund the necessary personnel for both fire and police. Okay, the, uh, the timing of a decision regarding the November ballot would be last date typically would be the first meeting in August, August in order to hit the uh, the schedule so we have some uh, I think the first meeting would be August 8th and I and then if it's after that I think you're up against the deadline or yeah, past I, I the, deadline. Pull the deadline just give me a second it's August 8th is the deadline so it would have to be the Tuesday before the 8th the 8th is a Friday so it's a fifth. a fifth first meeting in August, first Tuesday in August. First Tuesday would yes. be the last time the council could take it up. So, yeah. uh, I'm assuming we'll probably track the same way we have in past years, which is uh, after we get in sometime in June, we'll direct the staff to do some additional polling in July, so that we refresh the data and the council can make a decision the first uh, Tuesday in August what I think is likely the way we've done it in the past. So that yeah. I'm not going to make a decision now to put something on the November ballot because we're, we're waiting <laughs> to see how, see how Election Day turns out in June for starters. Uh, so I, I guess that we would take no action on this today and wait pending the council decision uh, in June to, uh, to do something further. I mean, it's, we've, we haven't said no to a sales tax measure. We just haven't said yes yet. But it's, it's premature to deal with it for November. And I'm pretty, got a pretty clear indication to council on the, on Monday that it's not something that would go on the June ballot. Didn't seem to be anybody who thought that was the best time to do it. So what do we need to do? Take no action at this time? Okay, we'll just take no action at this time, knowing that this is pending. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Wall, do you want to speak on this? Sir, I, uh, I support Councilmember Campos and a lot of his activities. However, this particular uh, issue preys upon the public's dire request for more police officers and firefighters. Without, but included in this request is, is a very damning clause to fund other city services. Now, if the, I've spoken to uh, the council member Campos's staff last week, I believe, to tighten up this language to make it a restricted use fund. In other words, council can't touch it. This, all monies have to be raised from this should go directly to police and fire and not to support a council member's pet project in their respective districts, which is very commonplace. And that's why I can't support this. 
I mean, if it was a restricted use fund so we could get away of having police and fire being funded directly from the general fund instead of, and set up a financial instrument such as annuities, annuity-based hiring for police officers and firefighters to start out with, but all city employees in the future. And that's one of the things, sir, in your gallivanting to Washington, D.C. You should ask the president to loan the city of San Jose the necessary seed, seed monies to create these financial instruments to, uh, alone. And we're talking billions of dollars here for this to start working. And this, sir, is the way, let's say Santa Clara University operates. They're on annuities. They have money in perpetuity. Oh, in addition, you know, <laughs> God's on their side. But uh, you, sir, you have the opportunity. You have an, an, a really incredible finance department. Why don't you just talk to them in an executive session to see the numbers? Just run the numbers. It wouldn't take long. But with council member. Martha O'Connell. I would be more interested in what Councilperson Campos is going to cut from the budget to try to balance the budget before he's talking about a tax increase. Government keeps talking about more and more taxation of the citizens, but less and less about trying to balance the budget. This is just insanity. This is not the way things happen in the real world, the real world of, real world of business, or the real world, world of people who are at home trying to balance their personal budget. So I am opposed to any tax increase unless there's a corresponding list of programs that the city is either going to cut or trim back. Thank you. That concludes public testimony. I don't think there's any action the committee is going to take on this item. So we will move the agenda down to open forum. David Wall. Uh, what I'm going to talk about, this is not your fault per se or vice mayor's fault per se or any council member's fault because of the city charter as defined uh, the powers of the city manager and the appointing authority of the city manager. Now, we have an issue at the Environmental Services Department of hiring, first of all, an unlicensed principal engineer, sir, in your capital improvement program. $2.2 billion capital improvement program at the Water Pollution Control Plant. You have an engineer that can't sign off any documents. It's overseen by an architect with an expired license. I mean, this architect could draw you an outhouse, but couldn't sign off of it. I mean, that's how bad it is. Now, they've hired a recent retiree, uh, David Tucker. He's a great guy. He should have been promoted years ago. He's retired. But they hired him back to be a one-on-one -on -one coach for a newly promoted program manager that has no experience whatsoever in your South Bay water recycling program. So sir, this is not your fault. And I know you very well to this day that you would not tolerate such things occurring, but they are occurring in mass in that capital improvement program and at environmental services department. Sir, you have a senior engineer from, from public works, a senior engineer that is unlicensed, heavily involved with that capital improvement program. How is that possible? Well, I, I know how it's possible because nobody, including the administration, the, even the current administration, doesn't do a damn thing about what's going on with these promotions. Actually, it starts with the appointment process, sub-appointments, and promotion process to these nodes of decision making in which you... That concludes the open forum, concludes our meeting. We're adjourned.